Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Relief for Frozen Shoulder. Thank you for taking time to be with us. I am Ali from Nafil Academy. We at Nafil Academy delivers high quality continuing professional education courses and content for dental surgeon and dental sports staff. Today, we are partnering with Nafil Wellness to bring you this webinar. Before, before we begin our webinar, there are a few points I would like to share. This, web, this webinar will be recorded. And if you like to recording with your family and friends, please visit Nafil Academy YouTube channel. You need to post any question at any time in the Q&A section of your screen. Our speaker will do her best to answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. Our speaker, Dr. Vasha Santosh, is a qualified Ayurvedic physician from India's Pune University and has practiced in Singapore for eight years. She tried to bring authentic Ayurveda to the masses. She has worked with many patients to relieve and treat ailments holistically. Without further ado, Dr. Vasha. Thank you, Ali. Good evening, everyone. So before we begin our today's webinar, as usual, we invoke the strength, the power of the Lord of Ayurveda, Lord Dhanvantari. Om Shri Dhanvantari Namaha. May the words that flow out of this mouth be, with, uh, be in accordance with Shastra and science. Today's topic, the frozen shoulder. Is it just a normal pain in shoulder? What is this particular thing? And we find that mostly, probably, uh, a mother or grandmother has somewhere in some point suffered um, this, uh, predominantly definitely seen in women. And, um, and somehow, many people, they get better automatically, eventually, uh, after a few months or uh, a year and a half or so. So without much delay, let's uh, get into the topic. So this pain in shoulder or uh, whether unable to move the shoulder at all. So we'll see what Ayurveda has got to offer in this. But before understanding uh, that, as always, uh, we go uh, the science way because the gross is understood first easily. And then we go into the subtle aspect. Let's start first with what or why of this frozen shoulder? What and why? So what is this frozen shoulder? It's like pain and stiffness in shoulder joint. Where a person suffers the pain, is unable uh, to move the hand at all. The daily movements, maybe like combing a hair or uh, just uh, uh, even while bathing uh, to uh, wash the back. It's, it's difficult for the person to do the daily chores. And many times, uh, even the night is getting worse many times that the person is unable to sleep because even if by mistake he turns the side, he or she turns the side, it, uh, he is awakened by a sharp pain. So it's pain, a very bad pain. And it's also the stiffness of the shoulder joint, which immobilizes the person uh, for all, uh, from all the daily chores. Hmm? So this shoulder joint is like a ball and a socket joint. Our arm bone is uh, ending with a ball kind of a feeling and our shoulder blade it has got some hollow like a socket and the shoulder blade and this arm bone the humerus and the scapula so they and also there is a collarbone involved in making of the shoulders right but this ball and socket joint so what happens to protect this ball and socket joint the shoulder uh, the head of the humerus or the arm bone that comes and ends up as a head as a round ball and the cavity of the shoulder blade the shoulder blade is what we have at the back when we just uh, uh, try to touch the back on the sides not the spine the shoulder blade scapula is the other name for it so this particular joint when it is formed it is nicely protected <coughs> with a um, good amount of a thick capsule and this capsule is uh, made up of connective tissue and that 
कैप्सूल दैट कनेक्टेड टिश्यू इट बिगिन्स टू थिकन एंड इट टाइटन सो द मूवमेंट ऑफ अ बॉल एंड द सॉकेट दिस फ्रीडम इज गॉन एंड इट स्टेज ओवर देयर as like a frozen shoulder so a person cannot move the arm at all so why this um, joint thickens uh, why this capsule thickens why it tightens so modern has not found any reason for it um, and they also say that they don't know why such a thing would happen it's not a wear and tear it is the thickening of that capsule which holds this ball and socket joint okay so because of this the restriction of this movement and because it is like a frozen it that um, connective tissue is thickened and it is tightening this disease or this symptom or this condition is also called as a adhesive capsulitis so which explains now what the disease is uh, in a very clear way that ball and socket joint which has this capsule covering it becomes tight it becomes thick and the freedom by the movement is lost so it's adhesive it just gets all jammed up and a person cannot move the shoulder at all so this is the condition that we are looking into and reason <laughs> reason is the, the joint the connective tissue thickens and tightens that is the reason but if you try to go into why does it thicken <laughs> there is no reason found out it just happens okay uh, in which um, we are just seeing the modern angle so um, they also prescribe very beautifully uh, nice stages are given over here just give me a moment yeah so in the beginning stage what happens is this person uh, that any movement means he is able to move the person is able to move the shoulder but there is a uh, pain over there and uh, all movements are not easily possible maybe the if reach was full the reach is in a little lower angle but still the movement is there so this is like the beginning stage so it is called as freezing it's not completely frozen it's going into the, uh, that stage so it's a freezing stage it's a set so it can last just from couple of weeks few months but to two to nine months it can last then comes actual the frozen state so uh, post two months to a uh, year it can last in this the pain may not be as bad but the joint gets completely jammed up it becomes so it becomes so tight it becomes that no, no movement for, is possible the um the daily movements we take the joint movement for granted if you only realize it when it is not possible then we understand the importance of a certain joint and then the last stage is the thawing where it automatically starts getting better many times by just doing few exercises um and not major anything is required uh and the uh, joint starts to get its mobility and slowly it improves so the frozen shoulder goes uh, through this stage and the person gets better so it's nothing life threatening it is not a permanent condition it comes and anyway it gets solved from few months to a year or so or maybe sometimes even two years but definitely the person comes out of it so now let's see what are the risk factors the risk factors is a uh, little middle age people above 40 they start getting it and it's really very common in females then uh, sometimes uh, the immobility or the reduced mobility like you're not using the shoulder joint and that's why the capsule thickens and you are not using the shoulder joint uh, probably you have injured it Mm, there can be some fracture or there is some there are other muscles that support the so, uh, shoulder joint they are called like we are able to rotate we are able to lift so it's not of the joint the capsules where you see that capsule in you know? one of the picture you see it's a normal joint and other you see how the connective tissue is getting damaged but to support this particular there are various muscles 
So uh, they are called, the group of four, they are called as a rotator cuff muscles. I have put one picture later. So there can be a tear of that uh, or there could be injury for that. Or uh, a person is having a stroke or, or some surgery has done. So what uh, in these four things, what has happened? That you are not moving the arm. So probably a frozen shoulder can occur. Okay. And then there are diseases like diabetes. So a diabetic frozen shoulder is the most commonly seen symptom uh, condition in the clinic. And with Ayurveda treatments, we've done wonderful uh, for these patients. Um, and there could be other underlying diseases uh, as well, like a hypo, hypothyroidism. There could be some Parkinson disease or some kind of a heart disease. So these are all risk factors means these people are prone uh, to get the frozen shoulder. And what does the modern answer for this? Of course, you have pain, you take some painkillers, um, you uh, attend a physiotherapy session or worse come worse, then in inject some steroidal injections. Or there's something, uh, a system called as a hydrodilatation also, uh, where water is injected in a certain way. Or uh, under anesthesia, uh, shoulder manipulation is done or a surgery itself is done. Mm -hmm. So there are various, these are the options available in the modern science and how it is treated classically. This is the way. Um, how all doctors would ideally go one by one and treat the frozen shoulder. Because we now saw how the situation is, what are the bones involved, the muscle can cover, but it is not the muscular tear at the joint, at the shoulder joint. It is the connective tissue, it is the capsule that is. So they would be dealing with that capsule. So when they do shoulder manipulation and all, it is all under uh, done under anesthesia only at the person cannot take the pain of manipulation. Now let's come for today's topic that we have come, how this condition Ayurveda is seen. So this is our main thing. So in Ayurveda, this condition is a similar to a, uh, we get a word in Ayurveda called as Appabahuka. In Appabahuka condition, the Grantha, the Shastra describes that the person is unable to move the shoulder joint. Okay. And then the Shastra says it is because of the Vata aggravation. Now, where do we see Vata? We don't see it anywhere. And OMRI will also show Vata. What is Vata? The wind energy in the body. Is there a wind in the body? Of course, there is. Do we see? We don't see. Then how do we understand it is there? From the function it does. From the qualities it has. So what are the qualities of Vata? The predominant quality of Vata is called as Ruksha. Ruksha means that which is dry and rough in nature. My example, if you're exposed to too much of aircon, what is the first symptom we see? We see that the skin is getting dry or the hair is getting dry. The dryness feeling comes. Exposed to a chill air gives us a dryness. Vata's another quality, if you see the last one is also Shita. That means it's cold in nature. So vata aggravation brings about dryness in the body. Khara. Khara means it's coarse in nature. And sukshma means it's very subtle. Right? If we have the windows and some small gap also, if it is there, we must have closed the windows. The, um, the latch must have been put. But still there would be this gap, that very subtle gap. And we can feel or even sometimes if not the feeling we can hear the sound of the wind blowing so in the silence of the night you can hear the wind so it is that subtle which cannot be picked up by naked eyes so now what happens in the body because of certain activities that we have done certain lifestyle that we have led certain kind of food that we have uh, consumed Vata is getting aggravated. It is happening on daily basis. So uh, do we never do anything or something? No, our body will have its own strength to withstand the aggravations happening on a daily basis. And depending upon our that strength, we call it as bala. And this strength is at various levels, not only just the physical level. 
like we say, immunity. If you have immunity, you can withstand so many things. In a house, probably little dust, one person keeps on sneezing. But there are other three members in that family who don't sneeze. But one person is prone. We call them as allergy, as having allergies of so many things. But it is that person's strength to withstand how he is. So this bala, the vata, when it is uh, aggravating, the strength of us at various levels determines whether we show that symptom or we don't show that symptom. Or in other words, I can put, what is a weaker place in the body? Let's say my weaker place is the knee. Maybe I've got few extra kilos on my body, which could put some pressure on my knees. And that can be my weak spot. So if at all I'm having a hyper wind lifestyle, my weaker spot is my knee. This aggravated wind will find it convenient to go and lodge in my knee because that's a weaker spot. The bala, the strength over there is not combating the aggravated bio. Or let's say someone's um, tummy is not so very strong. Hmm? very sensitive tummy. The vata can go and lodge over there and create symptoms, maybe as simple as bloated stomach, that you eat little and it converts into the stomach blows up and the probably the shirt button also doesn't fit after a lunch. And post uh, after a few hours, then you can again switch into, or you have to change the belt notch, uh, one loser, uh, to fit uh, uh, the belt. So some people have this aggravation immediately. Some people don't have. So it depends upon how you have treated your body as a whole. It's not only one part because vata travels in whole body. Everybody has it in certain proportions. It is only a person's weak area would get attacked by it. A strong person will not get affected by it. So now in this particular case, what Ayurveda says is, a person who has not taken care of the shoulder, which has now turned into a weaker side, he is going to get affected if it's not a well-lubricated body. This is one aspect. Is only vata. There can be sometimes a combination of kapha also into this where it lowers to a certain extent, to a, that extent where the ingredients that form the joint lack the lubrication. So we can talk it in terms of vata is drying it or probably this particular dosha. Now I un, um, introduce one more term called as kapha aspect in the body. So even if you don't remember, don't understand the word, what is kapha and all, you can conveniently forget it. But you can hold on to this particular thought, that agent which binds all our tissue together, that agent which keeps our joints well lubricated. This is called a kapha. So vata we can understand by what is causing dryness. Kapha is exactly opposite of that. What is lubricating. Vata is like very light and it is having movement. This is very heavy and it is very sluggish and slow. So only common property between a kapha and a vata is both are cold in nature. Okay? And what is hot in nature? That is pitta. So anywhere heat in the body, metabolism, digestive fire, anything that is to be do, uh, um, anything that has to be done with the heat, that's coming from the pitta. Coming back to our topic. So now we are understanding this particular certain a subtle energy vata that's getting aggravated. So now when we have understood that. The disease is of vata and the weaker area is the shoulder joint. The ideal way, we will think, okay, apply oil on the shoulder. Yes, why? Because the oil, the unctuousness, the oiliness of the oil is exactly against vata's roughness and the coarseness. 
and then we warm up the oil. So that is against Vata's cold property. So there is no other substance in the world which is as slimy, sticky, oily, lubricated than oil itself. And when you warm up and apply that, that's the quickest way we can combat Vata. So does a shoulder joint person, a, shoulder, a frozen shoulder person use only the treatment for the shoulder? No. As we see, the Vata has aggravated everywhere in the body, but went and launched itself only in the weaker place. So if we focus only locally, we will reduce Vata. But it is only temporary and only of that area. So there are chances that the recurrences can happen. Normally, shoulder joint doesn't come, uh, the frozen shoulder doesn't get uh, on the same joint. A shoulder joint doesn't get affected by frozen shoulder on the same. The other place it can go. What do you do with this aggravated vata of the whole body? So in Ayurveda, there is a very beautiful system uh, of treatment called as panchakarma. Pancha means five. So there are five things where uh, you expel out these aggravated uh, elements in the body. We all we, I can give the term dosha, or which you can you heard, which you have heard now this vata or pitta or this kapha, which which are responsible for maintaining the health in the body. So this kapha, the original place is chest and above. That means you have to, if you have to remove kapha out of the body, aggravated, the kapha that is disturbing, the kapha that is in, in imbalance, the easiest way or the nearest route is the mouth. So in one of the panchakarma, you give the medicine orally and the person uh, is made to vomit out. Uh, emesis, it's called vaman. There's another way you give the medicine orally. It acts on the stomach and the person purges. So it's acting on the stomach where the seat of the digestive fire is. So for all pitta kind of, all fire kind of diseases are treated with this panchakarma type called as virechana or the purging type. Another route is you go through the anal route like an enema and bring out through uh, all the aggravated substances through the anal root only, like an enema. So Vata's uh, root places pelvis, intestines, large intestine. So when you are giving uh, oil enemas in a certain way, you are controlling the Vata at the root place. So this kind of a treatment is called as Basti. It is not for uh, clearing the stomach alone. That, okay, I'm having constipation, so I'm taking enema. It's not that superficial thought. It is attacking the vata, which is aggravated so much that it has gone elsewhere and attacking. In this case, it's so, so far from the intestine, right? Right up over there in the shoulder, it has gone into the kapha place. It's gone over there and it's attacking. And this particular aggravated vata, you can apply locally the oil, but the effect of the whole body's vata to come down, a certain way of delivering oil and certain herbal decoctions. So there are uh, many kinds of vasti or vasti, it is called. Both are correct. It is not just as clear. The action scene is a purging as an enema action uh, that you see probably the stools are not formed and you get loose stools in a certain manner. But the effect is to control the vayu and not just in giving. So this was our third uh, treatment of panchakarma. The fourth, I'll try, tell the fifth and then I'll tell, come to the fourth. The fifth one is blood letting out. Uh, blood let out is in various ways like leeches, um, a certain way of pricking with the needle or certain giving some, um, giving some striations with some uh, instruments so that the blood can be uh, you um, oozed out. But we are not doing this in the frozen shoulder. I'm just mentioning what is panchakarma. The fourth treatment. So is like uh, putting oil in the nose in a certain way or putting some uh, medicinal powder or putting some medicinal herbal fresh juice squeezed from the leaves directly 
um, is put in the nose. And uh, we say in Ayurveda, nose is the door for the head. All the uh, diseases above our collarbone, the clavicle, are treated well with nasya. Anything above this is treated well with the nasya. So it is a very unique, it is something a signature treatment where by putting certain herbal medicines in the nose, one can treat a frozen shoulder or giving certain oil or decoction, medicated decoction through the anal root can uh, heal the frozen shoulder. So this is something very amazing science where body as a whole is considered, not just a local area. Rest of the body, what is the scene is also considered. And it is so subtle. And effect is only seen. We need something like this. Uh, some Because this is a Shastra Vachan. Something beyond black and white what uh, science would see. Black and white. Because Vata, where we will see in black and white, which MRI will show. MRI will show dryness. MRI will show stiffening of the capsule. Um, so this all, the grass can be seen. So while understanding anything so subtle, we had to understand the grass aspect first. Then we can travel in uh, deeper. So where the modern says, why this capsule tightens or why it is stiffening, we don't know. But we know the effect of frozen shoulder, the tightening is the frozen shoulder. Effect of tightening the capsule is the frozen shoulder. So here comes the answer. It is because of aggressive wind in the body, which has gone and launched over there. So now that we go to the second point over there, which is saying as Snehana. So uh, we have just spoken about this nasya, which is uh, putting uh, some medicinal stuff in the nose. It could be oil, it could be the juice, hmm? it could be some powder and basti or vasti, uh, some form of animal. Now we are seeing this snehana, which is the most crucial part. Snehana means oiling, oleation, where you are lubricating. So it can be done in so many ways. One of the way is applying uh, on the whole body or on the local region, the oil. Uh, so many kinds of oil are there. Mm, uh, one of my favorite oil in this uh, Panchakarma, in this Abhyanga uh, medicated oil is something called as Prasaranya Dipeda. And the same Prasaranya Kashayam is also there. It works very wonderful in uh, these conditions. Uh, there is something treatment called as Pichu. Pichu means you uh, take... Um, cotton sheet um, and you soak that in oil and you put the, in a hot oil and you put over the shoulder soaking it in, in under a cotton uh, sheet and something called as spiritual is there uh, which means you uh, take this cotton cloth dip it in the oil and squeeze it in a particular fashion over the shoulder and um, all these three treatments Pichu is a local for the shoulder, but Abhyanga, that means applying the oil and spiritual, it can be done for Sarvanga as a whole body to get faster results so that the Vata can be controlled faster. So this is an external treatment. After doing Snehana, we do Svedana. Svedana means sudation. Sudation means you apply some heat over it. So heat is applied by different ways. You either boil some herbs in let's say in a uh, pressure cooker without the whistle and where the whistle, you remove the whistle and you connect a tube over there from the other side of the tube the ingredients whatever you have uh, kept and they are boiling they create a steam so that is called as nadi sveda mm -hmm. or something like um, you put it in a steam chamber directly you go and sit over there and that is also possible, uh, Vashpa Sveda. But in Ayurveda, the steam chamber has to be in a particular way. The head has to stay out. You don't have to, uh, for your vital indriyas, you don't have to give heat. And when you sit in also on your heart, a wet cloth is also put. So these are like the marmasthanas we have to take care of. So our different, the Kerala speciality is the Kiri, where you uh, tie certain herbs, either you tie leaves, which are called as ela, uh, fresh leaves, 
or podi that means it's dry herbs you tie it in a bolus or nevra nevra is a one particular rice which grows in 60 days and it is cooked with milk and certain decoctions and it is tied in this particular bolus and that heat is applied or a simple salt um or even sand or a lemon is been put in that bolus tied in the cloth and that heat is applied and the last but not the least something called as lepana there are different kinds of herbs you can mix into a paste and give it as a local treatment so lepana is a very specific it's a local treatment now we go to the another aspect so these were all the external aspects internally i just mentioned about something called as prasaranya di kashayam but kashayams means they are herbs boiled and a decoction is prepared. so they are not going to taste good uh, neither they look good there is no artificial color or artificial sweetener or anything added into it it's just the herbs boiled together and they are various so depending upon that person's condition uh, why did the vata aggravate this we will have to investigate in the consultation time is he why oh, god alone knows how is the stomach status huh? is he diabetic is he having somebody uh, some other illnesses so we'll have to analyze in so many ways mm? one of the ways um, is we call it as dashadha pariksha dashadha means a uh, 10 uh, way a uh, 10 fold of examination i hope i'll remember the shloka it um, it says like dushyam desham balam kalam analam prakrutim vayah satvam satyam tatha haram अवस्थाश्चिधाउटिंग it would be a individual prescription for that particular person so you really need a qualified vaidya to uh, analyze that it can't be a general rule okay this kashayam for this my grandmother took this so probably i should also take it but your bala and the grandmother's bala is it same agni bala that means your digestive capacity is it the same the dhatu that means your bone the blood the muscles there are seven such uh, tissues in the body is it the same uh, is the age same is the kala at the time same so there are so many variable factors i have mentioned 10 of these factors all has to be examined and then you come out with the kashayam whether you want to give a gandharva hasta kashayam or a dashamulya kashayam or whatever it is there are there is no dearth for the gis medicines it's it's these varieties and permutations combination amazing choice we have and not one one plain analgesic fitting for everybody it couldn't be that is it only kashayam no there are so many tablets also we can use uh, one which comes quickly to the mind is some form of google uh, that is comifera mukul very very well known um, uh, to reduce the pain give the bone strength uh, amazing uh, so there are so many tablets then there are some fermented drinks also which tastes like wine but uh, the moment i'm going to say alcohol in it Uh, there will be one section oh then i must have some of that kind of medicine and there would be another group oh this is alcohol no it's not i can't take that but. so let me clear this so it's not the alcohol which you all think this is one herb that goes a flower that goes into a fermentation and all the herbs all the plant based medicines are put into this jar and this flower is added that creates a fermentation which creates this alcohol kind of a effect so what we think as alcohol alcohol and what this medicine is is completely a different thing and most misunderstood medication then there is something called as avarti avarti is a oils that are concentrated and treated again and again so you get 
Uh, seven hour thi, you get 51, 21. And the highest hour thi you get is like 101. That means same oil is treated with that medicine again and again and again and again. And the oil which was so much now becomes concentrated into. And so few drops of hour thi is enough to treat uh, the patient, this oil base. Churnas are the powder forms. There are different, again, kinds of powder you can give even to get an Agni Bala, if you think. The problem is in the shoulder, but you're giving medicine for the digestive fire to be okay. So depending upon how that patient you have diagnosed, seen, and what you have found out in the consultation, it, it is all that Vaidya's skill. So if uh, somebody is not getting better, we cannot say Ayurveda is not uh, <laughs> uh, good or Ayurveda is insufficient. That Vaidya is insufficient. So if I'm not able to treat somebody, means my knowledge is not sufficient. I've not understood the Shastra correctly because the Shastra has all the answers. It is Yojakastu Durlabha, means the one who applies, knows to apply what the books are saying. He is Durlabha, he is very rare person. Then there is something called as Layam, like some jams are there. Those are, yari, uh, those are uh, yummy, uh, many of them, <laughs> not some. And Gritam, this is another uh, thing, very important uh, part of a treatment. The Layam and the Gritam, these come at the end of the treatment. They are called as Rasayanas, they are called as Apunar Bhava Chikitsa. That means the problem you have solved by giving Kashayam tablets and all. And it should not reoccur, a punar bhava, not to reoccur. So the treatment ends like that orally with the ghee treatment, not the normal ghee you eat. It is again the ghee is treated with the certain kind of medications. And then not to forget Ayurveda. When you talk of Ayurveda, that means uh, more than the medicine and the treatment. It is what food you eat every day without uh, the knowledge of that food um, one can't progress in the treatment one needs definitely to know what to eat i've just listed some points over here but this would take another whole uh, webinar to just talk about the ayurvedic diets predominantly it should be anti vata now we have come to know why because the disease is formed by vata Vata's quality is what it is called in nature. So definitely we will need only warm and cooked and hot food. Mm, we can't eat cold food. We can't drink cold water. You will aggravate that Vata. You should do everything that is off. Uh, we can't have dry food. Some unctuousness has to be there. That means some ghee, some oil. In that food has to be there. It can't be devoid of any unctuousness. Uh, hydration is different than oleation and lubrication. We must uh, uh, keep clear about this dryness or drink enough water no dryness is not just the water it's only hydration lubrication is needed so some amount of oil person must have in the food when i see very funny things um, just yesterday or day before yesterday i've seen a person uh, i have one spoon of virgin coconut oil in the morning very proudly people say like that uh, don't eat like that it won't digest um, you have to use it in your cooking, mix it with the food in a smaller proportion. You don't need one tablespoon to have just like that. That's not, um, if, you're, huh, if you're working very nicely, uh, heavy work, physical work is there, you've got a great appetite and all, you would be able to digest. But everybody using like this, it, it doesn't work like that. It has to be given in small proportions. So uh, when we have to season, let's say a little bit of mustard seed or something, how much oil we use? One little half teaspoon, one teaspoon oil is which. Hmm? So this is all about the diet. Uh, some tastes are there. Uh, there are six tastes, uh, out of which the sweet one pacifies the vata, but a bitter one will aggravate the vata. So we should not have that. Hmm? Then, um, of course, the uh, cold water I have spoken of and vegetables which we don't like like bottle god snake god ridge god those are the healthy vegetables and not the potato uh, which will cause so much of vata not those chickpeas and kidney beans uh, which will cause so much of vata something like moon beans which will be lighter for your body let's go ahead 
uh, we have seen the external treatment. We have seen the internal medication. We have seen the diet. Some form of yoga one must hold on to. If you don't know how you have never learned, please look out for a good yoga teacher to get some poses so that uh, it's not when you see them doing, you feel, oh, they have flexibility. I am not a year old. How do I get this? Some movements under some training, you will be able to do. Otherwise, uh, of course, physiotherapy is the best way. And you should learn uh, how to move or how to do certain exercises. I'm showing just few of the exercises over here um, where you move with a support um, like the first one, you see the rolling, how it is done. In the picture below, how a weight is held and like a pendulum, it is rotated. All these uh, various kinds, various forms of exercise, it's good to do under a guidance. First learn, otherwise you will damage and you will hurt yourself. But without exercising, it is going to be very difficult to come out of it. So um, just make sure um, there is a movement done. Don't immobilize your joint. That's why I put, uh, because if you immobilize it, it's going to get more stiffer. And best way is to apply the oil, do the heat therapy, give more blood circulation and lubrication over there, and then go for your exercise. That's the best option that one can do. Then. I'm just going to touch a point uh, which is only for information we should see. One of the part of Ayurveda, because it won't complete, I won't give you. So I'm just going to mention there are some vital points in the body. Mm -hmm. This um, I've just shown one of the marma in the yellow spot, but it begins from the hand. So we have Shipra marma over here in the hand. Um, also in the leg, in the similar place we have. So from the entire hand, these marmas I have listed over here, which one needs to work on that, stimulate the marma to release the frozen shoulder. And last but not the least, we should not mistake injury to a rotator cuff muscle as a frozen shoulder. Both are completely different. One is this capsule that covers the shoulder joint is having an issue and rotator cuff muscle issue is completely a different issue, not a part of a frozen shoulder. Not So the muscle that are supporting that arm to move is having a problem. So with this, I think I should stop over here. Um, we'll take the questions I've seen. I'm seeing a lot of uh, questions coming in. Let me try to, okay. One question is uh, for the webinars. So on, go on YouTube and you will uh, just type in search for Nafield Academy and you will get all the webinars over there. Not just mine, whatever Nafield is uh, conducting, Nafield Academy is conducting or from various uh, from dental, from so many aspects are there that you can see. So mine is also one among that. Then, okay, so that part is answered. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, is frozen shoulder a serious problem? No, it's not a serious problem uh, in a sense that it is uh, incurable, not in that sense. But it is a serious problem for the person who suffers it. Just imagine that you can't scratch your back. Just imagine you can't reach out a book. Or just imagine your daily chosen. Above this, you can't. So if you're just wearing a shirt, it's going to be a problematic. You can't get that movement. So in that sense, it is a serious problem. So you cannot neglect it. You will have to um, do something about it. You can't allow it to just stiffen because you... Keep on um, preserving it uh, one day to get better on its own. You know, if too much stiffened vata, uh, there is a limitation of that then um, to do only with the oil. Then we'll have to go to the modern only to get uh, a surgery or some jab or something. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it is a serious. 
but good part is there is a solution for it okay what foods uh, should you avoid with frozen shoulder? I think, yes, I have answered that. What vitamins? <laughs> Good for us. They're asking a wrong person because I am against this vitamin market. Uh, have a good diet. Don't pop in a pill. That would be, we are feeding and making all these pharmaceutical companies <laughs> very rich. <laughs> so we are under the um, blind, uh, this, a certain advertise comes, they market it so well. Their models are so good. The colors they use are so good. Uh, and you really feel that in life you are somewhere behind and you must catch up on that. So it's like a more consumer market. Let's not have this habit of simply consuming a vitamin. There should be some deficiency, some reason, something. And you have taken it for a while, overcome that deficiency, and then you have to drop it also. I see people, you know, they keep on taking it. So that's not good. Is heat good for frozen shoulder? Yes, I think I have answered that. The number of kiddies that I have shown, uh, we, we have to, yes, apply heat over there. Can frozen shoulder lead to paralysis? Mm. Paralysis can have a frozen shoulder. So you can't move the shoulder joint and all. See, uh, both are different. This is a local issue. What the, the frozen shoulder. And where is paralysis happening? There is something happening in the brain where the arteries, they have lost their elasticity and they have probably broken. Which side of that thing is happening, that event? Opposite side of the body getting affected. So both are completely different. Then comes, can frozen shoulder be a symptom of something else? Uh, no, it's not a symptom of something else. But it, as I said, it is that um, capsule in the modern angle. But in Ayurveda, it is definitely the vata that is getting aggravated. Um, and uh, diabetic frozen shoulder is uh, common. So we have to see whether the person is having his sugar under control or not. What is the best way to sleep with the frozen shoulder? Oh, it can't be something common. It depends on that person because it's a very miserable night that person suffers from. So it is nothing best way. Whatever one feels comfortable. Uh, not, not all people can sleep straight. They need to change sides, uh, probably their chest or their breathing uh, is not so very comfortable and sideways are comfortable neither way. So a person will have to find the own way, um, whether you want to put pillow uh, support of a soft cloth and then go on it. Or, so it is going to be a individual convenience. Um, thank you for another, as of 40 years, it is recommended to follow Panchakarma once a year as a preventive measure. Or should it be done only when certain malign conditions manifest? So with the panchakarma has to be done uh, simply. If so, what is the best season to benefit from nature support? Thank you. Very brilliant question. Panchakarma has to be done simply according to Ayurveda and not wait till the disease gets formed. So there is something called as vasantik vaman. Vasantik Vaman means, Vaman means emesis, uh, doing Vamana Karma, doing, giving medicine and uh, vomiting out the kapha. So Vasanti, Vasanta means spring season. What happens in a winter season? All chillness is there. Okay. Spring comes after the winter. In spring, what happens? The sun shines brighter. All the darkness and the gray and all that deep winter has gone. So the the cold that was trapped with the heat, it melts. So by nature, in the spring season, all kapha type of problems come. See, we uh, I can say it in the other way. All the allergies come in spring season, sneezing and whatnot. So for a kapha to reduce, um, you can have a vasantik woman and you will not have any uh, allergies. This is one part. In the summer is accumulating a lot of heat. And after summer comes the rainy season. So what happens over there? The heat and this rain. 
this combination is giving the call as pitta agri this vata aggravating uh, factor the heat is subsiding and the rain is creating a issue uh, with the chillness so basti is good in the rainy seasons basti enemas the oil enemas enemas are not so water enemas definitely no so water it dries the intestine enemas are not those coffee enemas it is not for clearing the stomach i'm talking of vasti the enemas of medicated oils and medicated decoction to reduce the vata rain has come and gone chillness is there then comes the autumn the time for pitta to get aggravated so we should have some purging done at that time so vamana vasti where the vata is aggravating you see the vata example in rainy season i can give all these arthritis people they get aggravation of pain in their joints very badly all this happens in the rainy season because vata gets aggravated with the rain chillness and the amla dharma we say so many factors are there but i've just said very in a colloquial language so in three three times at least we have this to do huh? and do we have to do all three in the all year depending upon your body's condition if you have the bala please go ahead if you don't have the bala no then it's not the shodhana karma shodhana means to get out of the body the aggravated dosha then you can go for something shamana that means you pacify the aggravated doshas within the body then in the dinacharya that means daily this is this i said about the rutu charya that means the season according to the season what you have to do with the panchakarma but in the dinacharya one of the uh, one of the therapy that is said is putting oil in the nose so the nasya in the panchakarma is to bring out all the aggravated but the nasya in the dinacharya is to prevent all the problems that to come all about the clavicle bone so yes um you can put one or two drops of sesame oil in the nose and ratha moksha it is not simply done um it there has to be some reason why you would uh, need a ratha moksha i think i have answered that uh next question is as swata is about dryness and applying oil on the body helps are there some medicated oils ghee's which can be taken internally to ease the vata yes so many of them like this is the ayurveda forte and this should be a, a person to person different and if you don't have any access to ayurveda doctor then for your cooking the coconut oil would be a better if you are not living in a cold country and it's not a winter season and on the body to apply would be a uh, sesame oil uh, internally little bit of ghee uh, would be okay so to make your daily food with little bit of oil or ghee that is should be okay medicated ones there are so many uh if i start telling names you all i'm sure you all will start jotting it down and that's going to create a problem because i do not know uh, who is of which prakriti <laughs> over here so that's a problem hmm? then uh thank you dr varsha for excellent informative session how can we get a copy of presentation as pdf recording for all reference okay so you can contact the academy person i can leave the pdf of the stock um and i i don't mind sharing this uh, at all uh, it is meant for giving only uh, i don't uh, sit and preserve <laughs> uh, anything as my thing it's not there and if you are living in singapore do visit me this is my address you can just give a call you can note this and um, we can have you see directly and get also so i would also like to see but yes you can contact the academy i can leave um, the pdf files over there of whichever talks you want and it will be shared freely no doubt about it but i think i have taken all the questions is there anything else that i have not answered ali have you spotted out any question which i have left no sir all are answered So if you have seen the address, I'm just stopping. Yeah. So thank you for joining. And as always, 
we end the session with the prayer in my last Thursday session. Um, I had missed it, so I chanted it on my own later, um, just with a prayer so that everybody stays healthy, happy, and disease-free, stress-free. Uh, are there any questions coming in? Am I ready to end the session? Yes, Dr. All, all good. Okay, thank you. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Me on Be Happy Sarve Santu Niramayaha Me all be disease free Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu May everybody see only auspiciousness everywhere Matash Chit Dukkha Bhag Bhave Let there be nobody in suffering Nobody should have been. Om Shanti 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 Let there be peace within me, around me and in the universe. Thank you all of you for joining this series. I'll come back in February month with new topics. Y'all are requested to send the topics that you would like to hear so that I can prepare it and deliver what you would like to. Many of you are sending and I'm grateful for that. I'll start preparing and we see back in February. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, everybody.